Hey, what is up guys? Welcome back to the channel. Hope you guys are doing well. And welcome back to episode 12 of our How to Build This YouTube app series. So first, I want to go over quickly what we did in the last episode here. So let's turn our attention to the simulator. And I'm going to pop it up into the center right here. And the last episode, we implemented this horizontal bar right there. And every time we click on one of these menu icons, the horizontal bar slides over appropriately in the correct location in this menu bar. So if you missed out on that episode, the link for that video is in the description below. So make sure to click on that and give that a watch first. Okay, moving on, I want to show you what we want to implement today. And inside of my somewhat completed application here, I'm going to click on one of these menu icons and show you that it slides over the bottom panel appropriately, depending on which icon you click onto in the menu. So that's what we want to implement today. And let's see, I'm going to shrink this down and bring it to the corner. I'm gonna run this application here. And this is the current code for where we left off last time. So clicking on that does nothing, but just slides over the bar. All right, now before I start the implementation for this project today, I wanted to kind of present you guys with a question of the day. And the question is, how do we know within a scrollable view, for example, UI scroll view, uh, table view, and UI collection view, how do we know exactly where we've scrolled from, uh, from inside of that view and what location the, the scroll is inside of that view? So that's the question. And the answer to that question is actually what we're going to use to implement the tracking of the horizontal scroll bar. All right, so having said that, let's go ahead and look at home controller and begin our implementation. Now, I'm gonna go ahead and tell you that the implementation is, uh, is a little involved and the easiest way for me to actually illustrate what is going on is to comment out all of these collection view methods right here. And essentially these methods provide us with this video cell and the height of each cell and also the amount of cells inside of the collection view. And I'm going to comment that out and run the project right now. So what you'll see is a blank white screen for the collection view. And this is exactly where I want to start in order to kind of slowly build up on the actual implementation of the horizontal scrollingness of our uh, panel down here. So the first thing I want to do is return the amount of sections that my uh, menu or that my panel right here should contain. And to do that, I'll say number of items in section and return four for four sections, uh, the home, what is this, the trending, subscription, and the account section. So inside of home, well, inside of each one of these sections, I need to return a cell. So cell for item at index path, and I need to return a cell here. So I'm going to say let cell equals collection view, dq, some kind of cell with an identifier and this index path that we get from the method up here. And after we're done with that, we have to return this cell. So the question now is what is this identifier object right there? And I'm going to do this. First, I need to register a new cell. Instead of this video cell that gives us the nice Taylor Swift thumbnail, I'm going to register a different cell from within view to load, okay? And before I do that, I want to apply some bit of cleanup logic here. So I'm going to copy that or I'm going to cut that instead and create a new function called setup collection, let's see, collection view down here. I'm going to paste all that code into this function so that my code is a lot cleaner and easier to read. So now we have these three setup functions and here is what I'm going to do. I'm going to comment out the registration of the video cell and I'm going to say collection view register new class like this right here. And this cell class, I'm going to use the default UI collection view cell class with a dot self to get the class and cell ID right here. So we don't have cell ID just yet. So why don't we create a string called let cell ID equals just as cell ID right there. This way we can DQ this cell right on the bottom when we're calling cell for item at index path. So cell ID right there. And here we go. So if I run this project now, we don't see anything inside of the collection view, I don't think, or perhaps we see black cells. Let's say nope. So the cells are defaulted to a uh, clear background color. And if we set the background color to a UI color of 
blue like that, the cells will appear as soon as this application gets up and running. Cool. So there we have it. I didn't lie. We have four cells that are placed in kind of this horizontal layout. So where do we want to go from here? Well, I want to provide the actual size of each one of these sections right now. And we do that by overriding the size for item at index path method. And we need to return a CG size make of view frame width. This will give me the entire width here. And I'll get the entire height by specifying view frame height. So running this now, we'll get the entire section to be filled out by this blue cell here. And as we drag up, we get each one of these four cells inside of this vertical scroll. So that's a pretty good uh, implementation so far. Now, the next thing I want to do is to make this collection view uh, scrollable in the horizontal axis instead of this vertical axis. And we do that uh, in two ways. So the first way of doing this is to perhaps go to app delegate and inside of line 22, where we're specifying the actual layout, we can actually specify layout dot uh, scroll direction equals dot horizontal. And so this will change the horizontal scroll to uh, horizontal, I guess. So that's what it does. And that's pretty good. <clears throat> that's looking pretty nice. So instead of doing it this way, I'm gonna comment that out. I'm gonna show you a different way of doing it, which I think it might be a little cleaner, but you guys are free to choose. And inside of unit load, let's see, maybe not inside of unit load, but perhaps inside of setup collection view, because this is a more fitting place to put this. We'll say if let flow layout equals collection view dot collection view layout, downcast it as a UI collection view flow layout like that. Now we have access to that layout parameter that is right there. So inside of here, we can just say flow layout dot scroll direction uh, equals dot horizontal. And this achieves the exact same thing as what we typed out inside of app delegate. So you notice how we get this horizontal scroll and it is no longer scrollable in the vertical direction. Cool. All right, now inside of collection view, I want to implement this feature that enables me to kind of just page through the horizontal uh, cells. In other words, I want it to snap in place. Kind of like this, when I scroll from left to right, I can just snap it in place. And it doesn't uh, have this effect where it ends up in the middle of the screen, like what this is doing right now. And the easiest way to do that is doing a one line of collection view dot paging enabled equals true. So nothing too, uh, nothing too difficult just yet. And we scroll, we scroll, we scroll, and then we scroll, scroll, scroll. And that's how we get the snapping behavior uh, for our horizontal cells. And now notice that we have this little uh, problem here where the gap between each cell gets more and more dramatic as we scroll to the right. So how do we fix that? Now, if we go to flow layout, so flow layout dot minimum line spacing, set it to zero, that will decrease the gap between each one of those cells so that as we scroll, it doesn't have a gap. And that's kind of how we fix that little bit of a problem between our cells. But now we've kind of introduced a different issue where I'm looking at the scroll bar down here and I see that it's scrolling, but it's really, really hard to tell which cell that you're on. For me to fix that, I'll go back to cell for item at index path here, and I can set the cell uh, background color. Instead of blue, I can set it to a different color for each one of these cells by specifying a colors array right here. And what is this array? Well, I can actually do uh, this declaration in a few different ways. And I'm gonna show you a neat trick that you can apply in Swift. By specifying the array uh, type like this, we can actually just do dot blue color like this, and that works. So dot green color like that, or we can just specify UI color dot whatever color. So UI color 
Z purple color. Okay, so you can either specify the dot version of this or the entire uh, class name and then the dot color. And that's how that works. So cell dot background color will now equal to colors and index path dot item for each one of these colors. So in other words, each one of these cells will take on these colors inside of the array. So as I scroll over, we can now very easily see which cell uh, we are on. So that's pretty good. Now the next question is, what do we want to implement for this horizontal bar there? In other words, how do I make it so that every time I scroll to the next view, the horizontal bar kind of scrolls along with it? So that's the next part. Ah, good old water. <clears throat> All right. Now, in the last video, if we go ahead and open up this menu bar file, we take a look at what is going on. So every time we click on one of these buttons over here, we execute this method called uh, did select item at index path, and then we modify this horizontal bar left anchor constraints constant to be a value that matches wherever this icon is. So that's kind of how this horizontal bar works. And this property here, this constraint, is accessible from kind of outside of the class as a property of menu bar. So that's kind of how we are going to implement this uh, this swiping behavior so that the menu or so that the horizontal bar will follow along with wherever we're swiping to like that. So like that. And so when I swipe here, I want this horizontal bar to scroll over to the next icon. And I will do that very easily by going back to home controller and inside of one of these uh, methods here. So here is the actual answer to the question of the day. So how do we find out exactly where we are from within the uh, collection view? How do we find out where we've scrolled to? And we find that out by implementing a scroll view did scroll method here. And because collection view is a subclass of UI scroll view, we will know exactly where the x value is if we just type in printout scroll view dot content offset dot x. So I'm going to print out this value here onto the console at the very bottom, and you'll be able to see that it's pretty much the translation value of the X every time we scroll over like that. And so that's how that works. And I'm going to use this X value now to translate this horizontal bar over every time I scroll like that. Very simply by doing this. So we're going to say uh, menu bar. So I'm going to access menu bar, and we're going to access this left constraint and set the constant to this scroll view dot content offset dot x. And if we run this now, we're going to see the, uh, the horizontal bar scroll along with my horizontal collection view here. And you notice how it's scrolling really fast. In other words, once we scroll over one screen, the horizontal bar is now off screen like that. And the way we will fix that is to actually just divide this, this scroll value by four. And so divide by four like that. Let's see, let me fix this with a space. And here we'll get one fourth of the entire translation value to achieve this effect here. So nothing too bad yet. And that looks pretty good. So let's see, what do we want to do next? I want to actually implement the scrolling of this panel down here whenever I tap on one of these menu bar icons, right? So in other words, I want to tap on this icon and then I want it to scroll over the bottom panel like this. Okay, so how do we go about doing that is the question here. So to illustrate how this kind of works, I'm going to go to view to load. We have this <clears throat> set up nav bar buttons. And then inside of this function, we set up this search icon up here. And this calls this function handle search, which prints out one, two, three down here. So I'm going to use this to kind of demonstrate how we want to uh, start implementing this scroll right here. So 
So inside of handle search, I'm gonna call this function down here called, let's see, scroll to menu index is what my function is called with this uh, int parameter called menu index. And I want to call this function scroll, let's see, uh, collection view, scroll to item at index path. And what is this index path parameter? Well, I'm going to create that up here. Index path, capital P equals NS index path for item. And this item will be this menu index right here. Section will always be zero most of the time. And index path right there, scroll position of none and animation of true. Okay, so I have this function now. And I'm gonna call that whenever I hit this, this magnifying glass on the top right by calling scroll to menu index. And for here, this menu index will be a value of two just for demonstration purposes right now. So take a guess as to what this is going to do whenever I tap on this uh, little button right here. Basically, it's going to scroll to this second index here by doing that. So it scrolls over to this part of the collection view, right? So click there. It just scrolls over to the second index of this entire collection view. That's how that, that works. So click there, Let's see. Click there, gets that to the gray. Click there, and that's how that would work. And I'm going to use this function inside of my menu bar here. And every time we go to uh, one of these icons, every time we tap on this icon, we execute this did select uh, item at index path method right here. So wouldn't it be nice, wouldn't it be nice if we can call this function home controller dot, whatever this function is called, scroll to menu index right here. Wouldn't it be nice if we can call this function from within the menu bar? Now, I'm gonna show you how to do that very easily by going up to the top of menu bar and I will create a reference to a home controller object like this. Specify, uh, specify that as a home controller optional like that. And now that we have a reference to a home controller, we can call that right here. So we can actually just call that home controller. Let's see, home controller dot scroll to menu index of two. Get rid of this guy down there. And if I run this now, we will not see anything happen every time we tap the icon. So I'm gonna click on one of these icons right here. And you see how the bottom panel does not scroll with the menu. And the reason for that is because home controller right here is nil. So I'm gonna put a breakpoint and click on the icon. We execute this line right here and take a look at self home controller. Is this nil value right there? So we need to actually set a reference to home controller in this menu bar object by going back to home controller and see this little bit of code where we declare menu bar. We can simply say menu bar dot home controller is this self right here and ref or references this entire controller with this self. Now the compiler does not like this and we will fix it by typing in lazy var. So this uh, makes this block down here. Uh, it makes self accessible from within this closure block. That's what lazy var does. And what do we do now? So running this project, every time I tap on one of those icons in the menu, the bottom panel will scroll to the second index. So this does that. And the tap goes to the gray. It goes to the gray, right? And the reason why it goes to the gray is, let's see, it's because we've specified in menu bar this hard value of two. So instead of doing the two here, we'll type in index path dot item instead. And now the, uh, the controller will scroll to whatever menu icon we tap on like that. So it's blue, green, gray. So this will go to the gray and this will go to the green, just like that. So pretty simple. And now we need to fix this issue where this, this horizontal menu bar right there, the behavior is a little wonky it doesn't exactly appear in the right location every time we start the animation. And we fix that by easily commenting out, see all of these lines right there. I'm gonna run the project one more time to show you that we no longer need the animation. So that is what happens now. 
That's pretty smooth. I like the animation, and the behavior is pretty much exactly what I want right now. So the reason why we don't need the animation anymore is because the home controller actually keeps track of the uh, pretty much the the menu, the, this little horizontal bar with this constant value inside of scroll view did scroll. So that's what happens. All right, hopefully not too confusing, but that is how this scroll bar works. So the next question is, how do we actually get it so that whenever we scroll from left to right in the collection view, how do we get it so that the menu bar actually highlights the icon from within uh, the menu? In other words, I want to highlight it like this, and I want to highlight this flame icon every time I scroll over to the screen side. And the effect will look like this when I scroll over. It highlights the correct icon like that, and like that, and like that. So if I go back to my app right here, you notice how it doesn't highlight the icon. And this is probably the trickier part of today's video tutorial. And I will do that by figuring out where this, uh, where this scroll view is actually going to land in other words, I will find out the target of this content offset. So the way to find the target of the collection view, wherever you scroll, is to override another method inside of a collection view controller called scroll view. And you can just type scroll view target like that. Take this method. And I'm going to print out this, this target content offset value right here. So target content offset dot memory. Let me just tell you what that means in a bit. Okay, now target offset memory.x will print out a value of see, 375 for the first screen, and then 750 for the second screen, and 1125 for the third screen. So essentially, it's starting from this, it's zero, and this is one times 375, this is two times 375, which gives 750, and this is a three times 375. And what is this 375 value? Basically, it's the it's the value of view frame width. In other words, it's the width of this entire controller. Now, we have this width here, and we have this target, right? So based on those two values, I can figure out exactly where the menu bar should be selected every time I scroll uh, to the left and scroll to the right. Essentially, I will do this here. So I'm going to print out this value. So let's see, print out uh, target content offset memory dot x divided by view frame width. So let's see what that gives us. And so remember this will be 375, 750, and 1125. And we divide that by the entire width. So we get one, two, three. I'm just looking at the console down here. And two, one, zero, one, two, three, two, one, zero. Now that we have the actual index of the target, we can simply select it by typing in here, a menu bar dot collection view dot select item at index path, and we'll pass in this index path variable that we create right above here. Let index path equals NS index path for item like this. And we'll use this value right here. So I'm gonna capture this inside of a reference called let index equals the entire thing. And we can specify index here. And section is zero again. However, this is now a computer value of CG float because X is CG float and width is also CG float type. In other words, we have to cast this down as an int right there. And inside of index path, we'll specify index path animation of true, and scroll position of, let's see, none. All right, so I'm gonna run that, and let me just delete these couple of lines there. All right. Okay, let's now see what we get every time we scroll. So I'm gonna scroll over here, and you see how it nicely animates the highlight for the icon right there. So quite nice, and that's how you achieve this effect where Every time you scroll the collection view, 
we get the highlight of the menu bar depending on which screen we are inside of our collection. And that's how this kind of works right here. And that goes over, let's see, hit the home, goes over. So pretty nice. And the only thing we're missing now is the actual cells for our uh, home feed. Okay, that wraps it up for today's video lesson. I really hope you guys enjoyed the content for today. Make sure to hit the like button if you did, and also hit the subscribe button as well. It really does help out the channel. All right, in the next episode, we are going to talk about how to bring back our video cells in our now horizontally scrollable collection view. Really exciting stuff, so I hope you guys look forward to that. And finally, you can download the project by clicking the link on the screen. You can follow me on Twitter at BuildThatApp. And also, if you're interested in learning more about iOS development, you can click on the following three links on the screen to go directly to the playlist on my YouTube channel. That's about it, guys. Keep on coding, and I'll see you next time.